through the overland down this road. I stand for justice. Um, I think that justice is the most important thing for me to kind of uh, express through my poetry, through my art, through my music. Invisible city, where lost souls, these lost souls have lost sight and right goals. Where brothers aim, but live life aimlessly. Because though they can pull a trigger, their life aims are weak, forever meek, unknowing to what they seek or even look for. That, Mustafa Ahmed, Mustafa the poet, Poet Laureate for the Pan Am Games 2015. And my guest this morning, what a pleasure to have you in the studio. Pleasure's thank you mine. very much. Well, We've been so impressed so by your talent. We've been playing this for the past couple of days. <laughs> we'll talk about where you're going to actually perform for us some of your spoken word in just a second. But can I begin with an experience that you had this week? We have pictures to show. I think we'll see them probably here in our screen of your carrying the Pan Am torch. Yes. Just two days ago, yes. you were part of the torch, really. There you are. And then you actually lit the cauldron for the community cauldron. So have you seen these? Yeah. pictures yet? No, I haven't. There this you is, go. This is really there you footage. are. Now tell me about that experience for you. Oh, that was an incredible experience. It really felt like, um, it just like... Looking good. Yeah. It was the first time like where I wasn't performing. I didn't really need to say anything and like my actions were really symbolizing the moment and like just carrying the torch just symbolized so much. I didn't even need to say much. Like I just had that just the, the pour of like support and like love from the community that, that I wasn't even familiar with. It was just so incredible. Yeah. So for you, I mean, who sees inspiration in all things around you, I, in the emotion of that or in the experience, was there any creative spark for something you might work um, on or incorporate? Definitely, definitely. Yep. Just like the, just like, I, I'm, I'm really big on metaphors. So uh -huh. like just the flame itself and like, you know, lighting the cauldron, like all of that to me, like, you know, just kind of related to the internal flame that I feel like everyone has. And like the flame, I think that's being ignited as more and more people come into the city for the Pan Am Games. It's oh, just so terrific. incredible. How did you become Poet Laureate? Um, well, I was uh, talking with, with Don, who's like, yeah. Don Shipley, who's Don the creative Shipley. director, artistic director yes. of Panamania. Yeah, for Panamania. And we were just talking about, like, you know, possibility of a commission. And um, he reached out through my manager, who's uh, part of, like, the advisory board. And so we were just talking about, like, what we could possibly talk about. And it was just this the contrast between the artist and the athlete and how they're similar in so many different ways, the risk and the tenacity and all the different things that they share. And so he well, really loved the idea. Explore that a little bit. So risk, tenacity, where else do you see parallels, um, artist and athlete? Imagination, the creativity, mm -hmm. and um, just really like, just like putting yourself there. It's also something that m might not be seen as a profession a lot of times. And True. a lot of people might see it as something that's like a little bit absurd to be like, you know, investing all your energy and time into one moment it can literally be 10 seconds or five minutes on stage in my case or five minutes to perform whatever um sport it is you're performing and it can go one way or the other can yeah, it i exactly. mean in, in that moment yeah. so many interesting things which you are now going to explore through your poetry because mm -hmm. be being named poet laureate means how many works are you commissioned to create? Three pieces, and I'm doing another piece for the a pair of Pan Am Games. Isn't that terrific? Yeah. So mm -hmm. some are in the works still, right? Yeah. I guess uh, you, we haven't even had the games begin yet, yeah. so it's hard. But one, uh, Mustafa unveiled at the launch of Panamania, which is the big, I should make sure you people know, it's the big cultural festival that's coinciding with, uh, with the Pan Am Games and these sporting events. So you've unveiled one. Yeah. We can't do the whole thing, but yeah. look right in that camera and give people a, a, a treat of your, your spoken word poetry. Definitely. All right. <clears throat> to dream intrepidly is letting these rocks fall in the sea. I'm contemplating my legacy. I want the ripples to spread farther than water. I'm ready to take hold of my legacy and know that these rocks only fall because I'm scratching the edge of a cliff, getting ready to dive in this sea of risk where people fight for hours, days, years. They fight, they fight for moments that may never come, doing keep ups with the moon or racing the sun because there can only be one. There can only be one of you, so be the greatest one you can be because the memory of you stands as proof. So how much of you will you give to prove to pump the blood of your truth? For memories have a life of their own, they live longer than we do. I'd like that to go on longer than we have. That's amazing. That's just part of what. That's wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you for so doing much. that for Thank our you. audience today. It speaks to not just the athlete. There can only be one. You know, excellence in all in all pursuits in life. I mean, so many men. So, so tell me something. Mustafa grew up in a, in an area of Toronto called Regent Park, which is uh, an area that's undergoing some change. Mm -hmm. But it's an area that traditionally ha has been very bleak community. It's been associated with with poverty and crime. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering. 
Pan Am Games roll into town, two and a half billion dollars, and yeah. athletes from you know all around the world. But then, you know, there's new buildings and traffic congestion. For s people in Regent Park, what? The, where do they do they see themselves at all? Do you think you've been the voice of Regent Park and so eloquent? Do they see themselves in the Pan Am Games at all? I think definitely. I mm -hmm. think that everyone, um, just everyone in the city, is kind of seeing themselves because it's like a reflection of who they are. The city is a reflection of who they are. For a lot of people in Regent Park, it's like that's all they've ever known in their life. So it's like those buildings and those parks. Those are reflections of who they are. Those are memories kind of collected in all those different places. And so when you have us being the platform now for everything that's going on, it's um, it's just it's a sense of pride and it's a sense of entitlement, and you feel as if you are a part of it, really. That's and interesting, because I wouldn't, I wasn't sure if they would feel excluded. These games have been all about, though, very much games of inclusion, mm -hmm. and also, as you say, showcasing the neighborhoods, the multiculturalism that is Toronto. Yeah. And I don't know if that's something and it's, that... Uh, for me, it's like, it feels like home, right? So it's like, it's like that familiarity aspect. It's like, these guys are going to be playing and like, you know, experiencing Toronto for the first time. Whereas us, we know Toronto. And so we're going to have that connection already. And like, you know, just having connection to, art, to artists and athletes already just because of like, you know, just the sweat and tears and the emotion that they put into their games. And then also having the connection to like, the place and like the destinations in which they're performing yeah. is also really incredible. The value of the games as seen through your eyes, that's so interesting. Anyone in Toronto, if you happen to be in Toronto for the opening weekend of the games and attending Panamania as well, where else can they uh, enjoy a performance of yours, Mustafa? Um, Saturday night, uh, we're doing the opening night of uh, the Panamania um, at Nathan Phillips Square. And also there's gonna be like, you know, so many dates at Nathan Phillips Square where they're doing like, you know, just like a full, just a, a full like plethora of just different artists and uh, yeah, it's going to be terrific. The from all over festival. the Americas. Yeah. Well, Saturday night with Serena Ryder, who has the theme song, of course, for the Pan Am Games. It'll be a performance. If we sort of whet your appetite for more, you can find more, more online, of course. And we look forward to when you can unveil the two other creations you're working Definitely. on and the one for the Parapans as well. Really Pleasure excited. to meet you, Mustafa. Enjoy the games. Enjoy your games, Mustafa Ahmed, poet laureate for Pan Am Games 2015.